All right, in this video, we're going to cover uracil catabolism in humans. We're not going to cover it in other organisms. Um, and we're going to see that in humans, uracil is going to follow the reductive pathway, which is shown on the left. Now, to briefly go back and what, to show you what we did in the previous video, which is where we talked about thymine catabolism, you need to remember the one difference between thymine and uracil. Thymine has this methyl group right here on the ring. Okay, Uracil does not. And so the pathway for thymine is going to be identical to uracil, except thymine has to have an extra enzyme, literally just because it has that methyl group. It turns out that because uracil does not have the methyl group, we're actually going to be producing a molecule that's very, very important for us. We'll see that at the very end. But for the reductive pathway, which is the human pathway, uracil will react with dihydropyrimidine dehydrogenase. Now this enzyme is the same as dihydrouracil dehydrogenase. Shown here, it's just a different naming system, but they're the same enzyme. They do the same thing. Electrons from NADPH are going to reduce this double bond right here. You notice in dihydrouracil, that bond is gone. And then an enzyme called dihydropyrimidinase is going to break open the dihydrouracil ring, and that's going to give us something called beta ureidopropionate. All right. Now, the molecule for which this enzyme is named gives us the name beta-ureidopropionase. It's a hydrolytic enzyme, and it cleaves beta-ureidopropionate into three molecules, CO2 and ammonia, which are waste products, but also we get this molecule known as beta-alanine. Right? Beta-alanine is very important for skeletal muscle function, and actually after this video, um, we're going to have an entire video lecture on beta-alanine and what its purpose is in skeletal muscle. In fact, beta-alanine is so important, it's very um, underappreciated, it's so important that if you actually go to a drugstore, you can actually find supplements of beta-alanine. It turns out that beta-alanine plays a role in buffering the pH of skeletal muscle cells, particularly during vigorous and high-intensity exercise. And so beta-alanine is going to be important there. Also notice the, the nomenclature, beta. This is not alpha-alanine. Alpha-alanine is the normal amino acid that we make into proteins. This beta, this is not alpha. This does not have a methyl group. Instead, the, it's the same number of carbons. In fact, it's a constitutional isomer of alpha-alanine. But the, the methyl group is actually put between the carboxyl and the alpha amine. So it's going to be beta-alanine. So one thing you should notice is that this is not alpha-alanine. Alpha-alanine and beta-alanine are constitutional isomers of each other, meaning they have the same number of atoms, it's just different connectivity. And you notice beta-alanine does not have a methyl group sticking out, which would be the R group of alpha-alanine. Instead, that carbon that is the methyl group is situated in between the alpha carbon and the carboxyl group. So that's essentially right here. Okay, and beta-alanine, as we said, is going to be used in skeletal muscles. So actually, the catabolism of uracil in humans is actually going to lead to um, a good, important product for us that we can use elsewhere, beta-alanine. Notice also that beta-alanine, because it is not an alpha amino acid, it is not used in proteins. It's just used in the function of the skeletal muscle. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. There are two other pathways I'll just briefly mention. There's a rut pathway, which it's not very well characterized, at least we know the end products here. And then there's also an oxidative pathway that's used in some organisms. And instead of um, simply reducing this with NADPH, the double bond, they're actually going to oxidize it with the formation of a carbonyl. Kind of interesting, but that's barbituric acid. That's a barbiturate. Okay, I just find that a little bit interesting because barbiturates are actually used as GABA, ag, uh, GABA allosteric activators, and so they're going to be used as sedatives in medicine. They're not really used much anymore, but that's just kind of interesting that barbiturate is actually a normal biomolecule in some organisms. But these are three different pathways, humans, of course, following the reductive pathway. All right, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.